beautiful Chicago Botanic Garden in their constructed prairie. And joining me today is Dr. Patty Vitt, who is the curator for the Tallgrass Seed Repository. Um, and Dr. Vitt, thank you for giving us a little bit of your time. This, I mean, you guys have been collecting seeds from the prairie in natural areas. Can you tell us a little bit about the history of the seed bank? Uh, sure. So we started collecting um, way back when, when we started our conservation science program, but we were originally concentrating on species that were rare, threatened, endangered, uh, and making relatively small conservation collections for them. So Dr. Vitt, kind of explain why are you collecting all of these seeds? What are you ultimately going to do with them? Well, we store them in our big seed vault. Mm -hmm. um, they're there for long-term conservation of these species. And, you know, when we think of conservation, most people think of saving the rainforest because they've heard that it's endangered and that it's being cut down. Well, the truth is that uh, the tall grass prairie region of North America is probably the most endangered ecosystem in the world. Um, here in Illinois, uh, we only have one tenth of one percent of its original extent. And that was 2,000 acres of original prairie left in Illinois, which is really an appalling statistic out of the you know, millions of acres that once existed here. And so it's really a, it's a labor of love to try and help all of those restoration professionals out there find regionally appropriate seed to undertake the mission of restoring the tallgrass prairie across its range. We think the tallgrass prairie is one big massive area, but you guys actually have divided it up a little bit more. Yeah, yeah so... Um, or naturally it's divided it's up a little more. It's naturally divided up um, into about 12 what are known as ecoregions. And the species, although they're the same in both areas, are going to be very different because they're more regionally adapted to whatever that local climate and soil and topography might be. So basically, little blue stem might be different in Illinois, how it's adapted versus in Oklahoma. Oh, very much so. So Oklahoma has really different soils. Um, also, the places where I've collected in Oklahoma, the Tallgrass Prairie Preserve, um, it's much drier than it is here in <laughs> yep. Illinois. Uh, and so the species are more drought tolerant. Um, so we call those eco-regional differences mm -hmm. or ecotypes. And that's a, there's a lot of genetic diversity that kind of hides in those ecotypes. And so that's what we're really trying to collect when we collect across these really broad regions. And you have pretty rigorous rules as far as collecting. You don't want to take too much from the native areas and that sort of stuff. Right, mm -hmm. right. So there's evidence that shows that we can collect kind of a lot of seed once mm -hmm. um, in a population and it won't harm the population. Um, it'll stay viable and all of that. And so we collect um, no more than 20% of seed that is available on any given collection day, <laughs> right? So let's say there's a hundred plants that have seeds on them. We would only collect seeds from 20% of those plants okay. um, or 20% of seeds from all of those plants to get a good genetic um, diversity from those from that population. Right. And so you're right now preserving these seeds and it, what is the process of preserving them a little bit? I know it might vary some. It does vary some. Um, so species that are amenable to um, drying down in particular, we call those species orthodox. And you can imagine an orthodox seed, they've read the book, <laughs> they behave very well. Um, they're desiccation tolerant, which means we can dry them down to relatively low levels of humidity. Um, and then we can put them in a little barrier foil envelope and seal it shut and stick them in the freezer for really long periods of time. The reason why we need them to be able to dry down is because um, you know, there's a lot of water in seeds, mm -hmm. and if they're not dry enough, they'll form ice crystals um, oh. in the cells um, as, as they go in the freezer. And that, of course, it lyses the cell walls, and that's not really good. We want those embryos to stay alive, right? right? Because right. they're, they're still really just little babies. So we want those little babies to stay alive in the seed bank for as long as possible. Um, but our primary focus is on what we call our restoration target list. And it's a species, uh, it's, I'm sorry, it's a list of about 545 species 
um, that um, have been determined are of interest and have value for restoration throughout our collecting region. Okay. Um, and so they occur in all areas of the, of the, um, the Tallgrass Prairie region. And we want to collect one sample from each of the 12 ecoregions that they're found in. Okay. So we get a really broad sample of those species. Okay. Well, thank you, Dr. Vitt and Chicago Botanic for sharing this with us and being a leader in this for us. Well, thank you for coming out and letting us speak directly to the people of Oklahoma uh, with our thanks for letting us come and make collections uh, in your wonderful state. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion. Music